Hey guys, and welcome back. I hope everybody had an awesome Independence Day weekend. We had a blast. Chris got a little bit of time off work. He got some half days. He had a day off. We took a couple different hiking trips, hung out with the family, did some tubing down a river. I mean, we just had an awesome time. I hope you guys had a really good weekend too and took the chance to really be grateful for this amazing country. So happy Independence Day. But we did also get some stuff done. I've been so frustrated trying to get into one of my nest boxes because I have to climb down and underneath the roost to get to it. It's just such a pain. So I asked my husband, I was like, hey, even though the coop is already established, is there any way that we could make some sort of an access door for me to get into this nest box a little bit easier? He had a brilliant idea so we didn't have to mess up the coop too much. So I brought you over here to it and I'm gonna show you what he did. So we still wanted to make sure that this was secure in case raccoons get in here. As you can see, he just took some scrap wood and he screwed four pieces like a big picture frame and then stuck the middle in there with a hinge and a little latch here that he left pretty tight to make it a little bit difficult to get in. But so, for the animals, of course. And you can just open it up and then he just took his hole saw and made a hole that's big enough for my arm to reach through. And it's just big enough that I can really easily just stick my hand in there and grab the egg. So it's a really nifty fix for the fact that this coop has already been established without trying to cut big holes and finagle things and potentially end up ruining the coop so i really like what you did here and appreciate it and it's uh, made it way easier for me getting those eggs out rather than having to crawl underneath the roosts i'm not sure what happened this year i tried to grow beets but not a single beet came in i didn't even get i didn't even get little sprouts that died off or anything so i don't know if they just really didn't like the soil here or if some sort of creature came in and ate all the little seeds i had planted personally i've never grown growing beets. I've never grown them on my own before. This is my first attempt. But I'd like to get some sort of beets this year. I really love beets and I've been doing a lot of research lately and the health benefits from them are numerous. It's ridiculous how good they are for you. I love them pickled, which is a really good way to get those good fermented foods into your diet. And I also love um, actually just taking the peel or taking off little strips of it raw and putting it right on my salad. I love it. So I'd like to get a second harvest out of it this frosts come in sometimes we get them really early sometimes we get them really late but my husband um last year he had gotten this and he had a chance to get this big pallet crate he got from work really good material and heavy duty i know with the soil with it it'll probably only last you know a couple of years that's how it is with the pallets and such but um so i went ahead and i just filled this i had some leftover bag soil and things like that from back when i did some more container gardening i so i in here i put a mixture of some peat moss some topsoil and some good organic hummus and manure. I had done research lately and I think once I'm through these bags of peat moss that I just have some stocked up. I'm never going to buy peat moss again. I did some research and apparently they have horrible environmental effects. I didn't realize it. So I'll probably switch to coca Core or something afterwards, but something new that I'm also trying. You can see some of the bits of straw that are sticking up around the side. Rather than using so much soil, I do have some stocked up straw. So I put a layer of this mixture on the bottom, then I filled the whole center with some broken up flakes of straw and then did another layer on top. So hopefully the beets will be able to get good nutrients from the soil and all that before the straw composts. The straw will compost into it. It's kind of like a reverse hilling, if you want to call it that, I guess some kind of hilling underneath and giving it, you know, just like the peat moss, that nice loose stuff. So hopefully the beets can get really nice and big. Um, I was able to do three rows through here and I just did the trench method of sowing the seeds and then watered it all down. So I'm really hoping to get at least a second harvest of those beets in this year. So since I already had straw out for the beets, I figured why not come over to compost pile real quick while we already had it out so I could put a layer of straw over the top, the compost needed to be flipped over, all that. I looked in the compost pile and saw something amazing. Right there you can see a big old summer squash plant. I've been feeding the baby summer squash and like you guys may know who compost, all the stuff that you throw in over the years sometimes starts sprouting back from the seeds. So I got a big squash right there. So I'd like to move it because it's, it's not spring right now. It's great when they come over winter. But um, I definitely want to transplant it out. I don't want to grow squash in the compost pile. That's not going to do me any good. 
I've never, um, I've never transplanted squash before, but I figure why not give it a shot. I'm going to see, I got a spot ready in the garden already by the other baby squashes that I have growing over there, and I'm going to see if I can't get this little guy moved here. So it turns out that it was actually multiple squash plants, not just one. I did unfortunately break one of them. I was a little too hasty going to pull it out and didn't have the roots loosened enough. I actually got, what do I got here? One, two, three, four, five, six different squash plants. Apparently I didn't need to actually plant squash this year because they just came back for me. But I've got um, got one hole dug and I already mulched over with some straw. I do try to do most of my mulching out here with the grass clippings from the yard. but. There's only so many of those to go around, so I used a little bit of the straw to mulch. Then I know of the squash and the pumpkin really like the mulching, and it keeps the weeds down. And such that since they're such heavy feeders, if you don't have weeds in there, it saves the nutrients in the soil for the squash. They're already starting to wilt a little bit from me moving them, and it's pretty hot out here. So I'm going to try to do this nice and quickly. That is, if I can remember where I put my shovel. Oh, there it is. I'm just gonna go ahead and plant them all, and if they taste great, if they don't, oh well. All right, so I'm gonna grab a little bit more straw and mulch around these guys and see if they come back. I don't know if you can see how wilted they are already, but plants usually do that when you transplant them, so. We'll give it a day or two and see if they come back. I'll definitely let you guys know if I get these guys growing or not. That's great, just free plants. We've got all kinds of stuff coming in for harvest. Little baby stuff. I don't know if you can see their little baby green beans. They're all over the place. That's our first little baby pea there. It's the only one I've seen. I'm looking now to see if I see another one. I think that's the only one I've seen so far. There's flowers though. That's our first little guy. And if you can see it back there, we've got little baby cucumbers. I don't know if you can see it, but they're all over. Little baby cucumbers. So that's exciting. Definitely be having cucumber sandwiches and pickles, all that good stuff. And also our first little baby head of broccoli coming in, the first broccoli flower. Oh, whoa, I got a crazy looking bug on my shoulder. I don't, okay, it's gone. I don't know what that was. But either way, that'll be exciting. And what I'm hoping is, if you can see, it's a little shady over here. It's weird the way the sun moves over our property. It starts out with full sun over the whole garden, and then between like 10 and one o'clock, we get good shade on this half of the garden, and then it goes back to full sun for the rest of the day. It's kind of weird how the sun moves over. But what I'm hoping is, I've always had a problem with my broccoli bolting. I always start getting really good broccoli, and then it bolts on me, which is always really disappointing. So what I'm hoping is, that the way that this gets that kind of midday shade, it gives the broccoli a little bit of a break to cool down and just chill out. So I'm really hoping it's not gonna bolt this year, fingers crossed. Some of the cabbages are actually starting to ball up in the middle there, which is beautiful. I love this savoy cabbage, I'm excited. My yellow onions here are turning into giants. The red onions are still a little small and scrawny, but they're going, they're getting there. Pumpkins and squashes are all doing beautifully and coming in. And we still have these giant cayennes here. I've got three massive cayennes and three, um, each one on its own plant. As you can see, the cayenne there is almost the size of the plant. And I'm kind of wondering, I've heard a lot about picking off that first flower when your peppers start, um, start trying to reproduce themselves. I've personally never done it, either, but if anybody out there has done it, let me know how it's gone for you. Cause, so I'm kind of wondering with how big that is compared to the plant, that if I grow these again, if I should probably remove that first flower so it gives the plant time to get a little bit bigger before it starts producing that massive pepper. All those celeries that I planted are getting a a little bit yellow, and like I said, when I planted these guys, I have never grown celery before. I've never grown it growing up, but I've never grown it on my own. This is very, very first for me. They are getting a little yellow. I'm not sure if they're, that's normal or not. If anybody's grown celery, please let me know if that's normal or if maybe they're lacking some nutrients. Or, and oh yeah, look at that little beauty. 
little green pepper in there. These plants are doing beautifully. I am so hoping for good green peppers this year. I've always gotten green peppers, but I always only get one or two per plant, and they usually don't do very well. All these plants are looking so beautiful and bushy, and they're branching, and I love it, and I'm just so excited. Look at all those beautiful grape tomatoes coming in. We've got some of the big early bush girls going on on the other plants. So we have plenty of tomatoes. I like to use the grape tomatoes for my salads and such. And we'll use the bigger tomatoes a few for slicing on hamburgers and that kind of thing. And take the rest of them and go ahead and make some tomato sauces and all that good stuff for the year. We've got little baby zucchinis and the end of those flowers starting to come in. Got two zucchini plants that are doing pretty well, two that aren't doing so hot. I'm not surprised the two that aren't doing so hot are on the side of the garden that get a little bit more shade than this side, so they're liking the sun a lot better. I don't know if I talked to you guys about this before, but I've got these around the edge of the garden, as you can see. They're pretty much outside the garden. I have four that are outside the garden, two are that are semi in the garden, but these are ghost peppers. And this one's actually doing pretty well. All this foliage here, right there, that big foliage, that's all the ghost pepper. And this is a very interesting plant. We're using this to try to ward off some of the deer and the bugs because you can smell these plants just being near them. It is not advisable to even touch the leaves of this plant. And if you eat the peppers of this plant, I mean, you use the teeniest little, like if you took your thumb fingernail and scraped a piece of it off, that's all you need. I will not touch these. I will not eat these. I will not mess with these. I do not handle spice that well. My husband, on the other hand, I said that I was getting them for a border plant. He's excited to eat them because he's one, he takes those hot peppers and just mouths the entire thing down like it's nothing. Doesn't make him flinch anything. He loves spicy stuff, sour stuff, all those really intense flavors. So I'm excited that this one is coming in. The now that is a glorious sight. There's still a ton of berries out there, but my baby is calling for me. So I've got to go inside and I'm going to take a break and spend a little time with him. I'm looking forward to that, but I will see you guys next time. Enjoy the rest of this gorgeous day. God bless and love y'all. Bye.